moral person says to himself, we claim that morality is noble and that we should keep it, that immorality is vile and that we should avoid it. Such an idea does not correspond to wisdom. According to the judgment of wisdom, the mind is not attached to morality. There is nothing there to grasp, nothing to let go of. This is how morality gives birth to the virtue of wisdom. Moreover, the person who does not observe morality, even though he has keen knowledge, seeks common occupations and keeps busy in every way finding means of livelihood. The organ of knowledge becomes dulled little by little, like a slicing blade, if used to cut clay becomes more and more chipped. The monastic who observes morality and is not occupied with the business of the world always contemplates the absence of characteristics which makes up the true nature of all dharmas. Even though originally he has only weak faculties, his knowledge becomes sharper gradually. For all these reasons, one can say that morality gives rise to the virtue of wisdom. Thus, the virtue of morality gives rise to the six virtues. 6. Furthermore, the bodhisattva who observes morality does not know fear. He is free of confusion, hesitation and doubt. He does not aspire personally for nirvana. He observes morality solely in the interests of all beings, in order to reach Buddhahood and acquire all the Buddha attributes. This characteristic constitutes the virtue of morality. 7. Moreover, in the words of the Sutra, above p. 770f the Bodhisattva is based on the non-existence of sin and its opposite. Apatyanapati nadiya patatam upadaya. And this constitutes the virtue of morality. Question. If morality consists of avoiding evil and practicing good, why speak of the non-existence of sin and its opposite? Answer. Speaking of the non-existence is neither wrong view nor gross conception. If one penetrates deeply into the nature of dharmas and if one cultivates the meditative stabilization of emptiness, one sees by the eye of wisdom that sin does not exist. If sin does not exist, its opposite, absence of sin do not exist either. Besides, if the being does not exist, the sin of killing does not exist either. If the sin does not exist, the discipline that forbids it does not exist either. Why? There must be a sin of killing in order that the forbidding of killing exist. But since there is no sin of killing, its forbidding does not exist. Question. Beings presently exist. Would you say that they do not exist? Answer. That which is seen by the fleshly eye is not right seeing. If one uses the eye of wisdom, one will see that there are no beings. As was said above in regard to generosity, there is neither donor nor recipient nor thing given. It is the same here. Moreover, if the being existed, it would be the same as the five aggregates or different from them. If it were identical with the five skandhas, the skandhas being five and the sentient being being one, five would equal one and one would equal five. An exchange market where five would equal, one would find no taker. Why? Because one does not make five. This is why we know that the five skandhas do not make up one single being. Moreover, the five skandhas that arise and pairs are of impermanent nature, whereas the being's nature is to pass from one existence to the next by accumulating sins and merits in the three worlds. If the five skandhas are confused with the being, the latter would be like plants and trees which, arising spontaneously and perishing spontaneously, are unaffected by the bond of sin and by liberation. Thus we know that the five skandhas are not the being. That a being exists outside of the skandhas has already been refuted above when it was a question of the eternity and omnipresence of the Atman. Besides, the view of self does not arise outside of the five skandhas. If a being existed outside of the five skandhas, it would be eternal and, if it were eternal, it would escape birth and death. Why? Because birth is to be after not having been, and death is to perish after having been born. If beings were eternal, they would fill up the five destinies. Being eternal from the very beginning, would they return into existence? Free of birth, they would also be free of death. Question. It is certain that the being exists. Why do you say that it does not exist? There is a Dharma, being, that has the five skandhas as causes and conditions, just as the Dharma, hand, exists as a result of the five fingers. Answer. This statement is false. 
If a Dharma being existed as a result of the five skandhas, the existence of this Dharma being would not be conceived apart or outside of the five skandhas. The eye sees color, the ear hears sound, the nose smells odor, the tongue tastes flavor, the body feels touch and the mind cognizes dharmas. But all of that is empty and free of substantial self. There is no being distinct from these six things. The heretics, who believe the reverse, claim that the being is the eye that sees colors, etc. Up to. Dot. The mind that cognizes dharmas. Or else, they are of the opinion that the being is the mind that experiences suffering or pleasure. Those who share this view do not know the reality of the being. The trick of the self-interested disciples. There was a very virtuous venerable disciple. The people who claimed he was an arhat brought him masses of offerings. Later, he became sick and died, fearing to lose the offerings that were brought to him. His disciples took away his body during the night and arranged the coverings and pillows on his bed so that one would have said that the teacher was there lying on his bed. To those who came to ask about the condition of the sick man, the disciples said, Don't you see his bed clothes and pillows on the bed? Without looking into the matter, the foolish people thought the teacher was sick and in bed and went away after having made their offerings. This happened several times. There was, however, an intelligent man who came to inquire about him. The disciples gave him the same answer. But this intelligent man replied, I didn't ask you about the bedclothes and the pillows on the bed. I asked you about the man. Taking away the covers, he looked for his teacher, but there was no one there. Here too, outside of the six objects, there is no Atman. Similarly, there is no individual who cognizes or who sees. Furthermore, if the being existed in the five skandhas as in its causes and conditions, the five skandhas being transitory, the being also would be transitory. Why? Because there is a similarity between result and its cause. Being transitory, this being would not go on to a future existence. Furthermore, if, as you claim, the being existed eternally from the very beginning, then the being would have to give birth to the five skandhas, whereas the five skandhas could not give birth to the being. Now as causes and conditions, the five skandhas give rise only to a metaphor of being, and the fool chases after this name in search of a reality. This is why the being is really non-existent. Since the being does not exist there is no sin in murder, and since murder does not exist there is no discipline to forbid it. Furthermore, if one examines the five skandhas deeply, one will know by the analysis that they are empty like visions in a dream, like reflections in a mirror. In killing a vision in a dream or reflection in a mirror, one is not committing murder. Similarly, by killing a being, I, E, the five skandhas that have emptiness as nature, one does not commit a fault. Finally, the person who hates sin and is attached to its opposite, feels scorn and pride when he sees someone transgress the precepts. He feels affection and respect when he sees an honest man observing the precepts, such a morality is a generating cause of sin. Consequently we say with the Sutra that it is necessary to fulfill the virtue of morality by being based on the non-existence of sin and its opposite. End chapter 23